activated your window into how we can change the way in which we aspire for persons with disabilities, how we change our expectations from seeing inability to expecting ability. Activated takes us on a journey of taking lessons from persons with disabilities in how we must do things differently to unleash the contributions persons with disabilities can and must make to building a disability inclusive Mzanzi. Hello and welcome to Activated with me, your host, Taryn Tomlinson. Disability is often feared to be the beginning of dependence and economic burden. But for many, embracing disability offers economic opportunity. Many persons with disabilities own enterprises through which they use the expertise and experience to earn a decent living, like motivational speaking, selling assistive devices and medical equipment, for example. In today's episode, we meet some interesting people who have turned their disability into an economic opportunity. Now, let's get activated. Coming up in today's show, we meet Nenyum Bazima, who believes that as long as we regard our disabilities as tragedies, we will be pitied. Our guest for today is Musa E. Zulu, who lectured in the humanities faculty before moving to the corporate world as a human resource manager. South Africa's National Disability Policy, the White Paper on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, was written to create space delivering disability-related goods and services. Mandy Latimer, a person with a disability, has extensive day-to-day -day experience of the barriers that prevent access for a wide variety of people. She is a tireless campaigner for universal access, that is, access for all people into buildings, public and workspaces, transportation and accommodation. Let's meet her. Mandy lives with a disability after what she described as a silly accident at age 19 when she slipped on a wet rock while climbing, an accident that has confined her to a wheelchair. And her hardship since then to access facilities turned the soft-spoken sportswoman into a verbal puncher of note in a crusade for equal access to facilities and opportunities for persons with a disability. I'm Mandy Latimer and how I'll usually introduce myself to everybody is aging adrenaline junkie and activist. I've been in a wheelchair as a paraplegic for 41 years. And in those days, there was zero facilities for people with disabilities, which made me become an activist to fight for the rights of people and to change the laws and the building regulations because we just didn't have anything there. I've worked for equality and pushed for rights, you know. Uh, Two years ago, I received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Gauteng, the Premier of the Gauteng. They offered it to me and then I looked back and I thought, I have fought for 40 years I've been fighting. And um, it was amazing that somebody else had seen that. We do sensitization in big groups of companies because we are desperate, and I am desperate, to ensure that people with disabilities are put into the workplace because it's been very difficult historically for people with disabilities to even get qualified because the schools aren't accessible. So that's why it's a sort of chicken and an egg situation. We're trying to create accessible schooling and universities and tertiary education so that people with disabilities are employable. I think so many people think that they can go into business and try businesses and then fail. And then they think it's they failed because of their disability, but it's not that. Everybody, we are still the same human beings inside. So if I'm a good manager or a good owner or a good worker, it's despite my disability. So just because I have a disability doesn't mean to say I'm gonna be a good entrepreneur. So we have to understand that. And I think a mentor is, is a great um, way of finding your way through the business. I've done a lot of traveling around the world and a lot of that was with the scuba diving, but I've also done some amazing adrenaline junkie stuff. I've uh, managed to do a bucket list item that I always wanted to do, which was wing walking. And in 2005, I was able to fly standing on top of an aeroplane, an amazing experience. My advice for pe persons with disabilities in today's world is you have to get out there and 
and make things happen. Nobody is going to come to you. Nobody's going to know about you if you're stuck in your home. You need to actually get out there and make yourself known. Get, do a course, get, join a club, get out there and be visible. Because the more we are involved in society, the more society accepts us. One of my favorite quotes from her is, first you dream and then you fly. The question is, how big are you dreaming? After the break, we will meet Musa Zulu, a published author and award-winning entrepreneur, international artist, celebrated motivational speaker, and prominent disability activist in South Africa. Don't go anywhere. Musa E. Zulu's life took a dramatic and unexpected turn in 1995 when he was 23 years old. Paralyzed and wheelchair-bound after a car accident, applying his personal philosophy of embracing change, he not only found a way to cope with his new life, but also to inspire others. Good afternoon, Musa. It's so nice to have you join us from KZN. Musa, you need no introduction to our viewers. You are a celebrated author, an entrepreneur, a motivational speaker, Santa on Wheels creative director, activist, husband, and father. You are a busy man. <laughs> I'm hoping that with time I can include in that list of titles, President. Yes, <laughs> I'll be voting for you. <laughs> Thank you very much, and, and thank you very much for the invitation. I truly feel activated today. Awesome. Yeah. We're very happy to have you here. Musa, what inspires and informs your decisions about what it is, what you do? It's the beauty of waking up to realize that I'm still alive. There are many times when we want to complicate the, the, the process of uh, decision making, when in fact it is deeply rooted in appreciating the fact that you have been given another day and decisions have to be made such that that day graduates into the next one. And how did you come to the decision to use your lived experience as someone living with a disability as an opportunity to self-actualize and to make money? Not take it this way, every one of us, whether we have disabilities or not, actually use the experience that defines us to find our pathways, number one, and number two, to make the, those pathways, uh, what you call it, profitable. When South Africa transformed into a democracy, it was also an opportunity for people with disabilities to transform and say, we are a part of this changing society and these are our stories. As you mentioned, it starts off with having an appreciation for all that you have and the opportunities and the capabilities that you have and then using that uh, form of appreciation simply to capitalize and create a life that you want for exactly. yourself. And when society is changing towards a democracy, which is the positive, I honestly did not believe that I had to categorize myself as disabled. Mm. I then decided the first thing that I'm going to do is distance myself from anything that begins with the DIS. Because even if you are disadvantaged, uh, disadvantaged in South Africa, a year after democracy, you couldn't really be talking about that. You were supposed to be talking about how you advantage yourself with the changes. Disenfranchised. The moment all of us had a vote in South Africa, we were no longer disenfranchised. Yeah. So I had to distance myself from that. Disempowered. How could I be disempowered in a society that was graduating towards acknowledging my rights? Disabled. How could I be disabled? Number one, where I was always an artist and could still use my hands to draw my artwork, mm. despite the fact that I was now set in a wheelchair. I was always a public speaker. The accident did not take away my voice. On top of that, I was always very good at taking the words that I spoke to translate them into lines, your paragraphs, your chapters, I could write a book. So in aligning myself with the times and distancing myself from the negatives, your disabilities, your disempowered, your disadvantaged and all of that, it opened doors. 
So Musa, before we go, at the beginning of this interview, you'd mentioned that you would like to add the title of president onto your very large uh, CV, an extensive CV. If you were president, what would the first thing be that you would implement uh, for persons with disabilities? The first thing that I would have to do is activate the disability sector in South Africa. Do you know that we number about 11%? And tell me, your next opposition party in South Africa comes at about 10%. So the first thing that would have to happen for any person with a disability, including myself, to rise to that position is to tap into what is available within the sector, which are numbers. And if people with disabilities were to sit down today and really reflect on their numbers, they would fully understand that they can open, number one, their own bank. Number two, they can open their own political party. And number three, they can contest with power of mobilization. Does this mean that you're going to stand and create your own political party? Because it sounds like you've put a lot of thought behind it, Musa. Um, I'm not sure if, it, if it's, if it's a, a plane where I honestly would love to triple my skills. Politics is, a, is, is as they say, a dirty game. I'm not sure if I can play that debt. Musa, thank you so much for your time and for your insight and also for leading by example. Thank you very much. And now and now that you have activated me, I can wear my hat. Yes. You said I cannot wear. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank so you much. much. Thank you very much. Nenyo Mbazima became deaf as a young child growing up in Eswatini, where he completed his education in a so-called mainstreamed hearing school. Let's meet him. This award-winning author and qualified filmmaker quickly managed to endear himself to both the hearing and deaf communities with his unique sense of humor, love for life, willingness to take risks, and recognizing opportunities knocking on the door for persons with disabilities. My name is Nenio, son of Mbazima. I was born hearing. When I grew up at the age of round about 10, I went deaf due to meningitis. After I went deaf, it wasn't easy for me to accept it. I grew up an angry child because I was deaf now. So I took my anger out of other kids. I enjoy the deaf world now. It's nice. At night, I sleep peacefully. I'm not like hearing people like you. We are totally different. At night, you're sleeping. You hear mosquitoes. You just can have peace. When I went deaf, it opened a lot of opportunities for me. As a deaf person, now I see life differently. We have started an online training, teaching filming, and using cameras, we're doing it via Zoom. The name of the company is iBuzz, and it's in collaboration with Vitz University. I have partnered with The Laundry. So last month, that's when it started. I've also been doing different projects throughout. So whenever I see an opportunity, I go for it. I just cannot wait for life to go back to normal. I just cannot wait for the day when we hear that COVID is no longer with us and our businesses can grow and flourish like it was before. Nenyo's belief that becoming deaf and embracing deaf culture and sign language, in other words, embracing his disability, has become a blessing and a catalyst for economic growth in his life. We'll be right back. Oh. 
welcome back. In our activated bulletin, we visit Kwasa Driving Ambitions to take a look at the latest in vehicle adaptations which allow wheelchair users to stay in a wheelchair behind the steering wheel, as well as an adaptation which allows people with high level neck lesions to drive a car. Carolyn from Kwasa takes us for a ride. This vehicle is their high-tech vehicle which is set up to allow the driver to remain in their power wheelchair and to drive from their wheelchair. The driver's seat is removed and they access the vehicle via a ramp and move with their wheelchair into the driver's position. The wheelchair is then secured and a back and a headrest fitted to ensure that they are stable and secure in their wheelchair whilst they are driving. This vehicle is fitted with the Space Drive system, which is a computerized driving system that allows people with minimal movements in their arms to be able to drive. Everything can be controlled with their hands. Zandile Machlangu has muscular dystrophy, which has left her with no hand function and minimal strength in her shoulders. She has used a power wheelchair for mobility for many years, but this hasn't stopped her from getting a degree at the University of Pretoria. The steering, which is positioned on the left-hand side, requires zero effort to turn it, and it can be used with a variety of grips to enable people with different amounts of hand function to still be able to drive it. However, it does require high levels of coordination as it is extremely sensitive. The electronic brake and accelerator is positioned on the right-hand side and requires a very gentle push to brake and pull to accelerate. The left hand has access to a panel of buttons positioned close to the steering wheel, which gives easy access to the secondary controls of the vehicle, such as the ignition, the gear selector, headlights, indicators and the hooter. Kwasa biedt de geleentheid vir mense met lichamelike gestremdhede wat die vaardigheid het om te bestuur, die geleentheid om bestuurlesse te neem en so doende hul eie rijbewijs te kry. Magic in Kwasu is a well-known voice on our airwaves and has become the conscience of many disability organizations and government departments for their failure to drive the disability agenda with more urgency and meaningful interventions. Let's meet him. Nkwashu was diagnosed with polio at a young age and triumphed over his disability by becoming a well-known and respected expert in the field of disability. He went on to work for various companies and through his journey inspired and motivated persons living with disabilities through keynote addresses and workshops on diversity and disability worldwide. tane mollo ya nga kula ri ni vutsoniwa ni ku bona mintlontlo ya vanhu lava nga ni vutsoniwa hi ku angarela ni munhu loyi ni nga kula ni lava ku lwela eti mfanelo ta vanhu lava nga ni vutsoniwa ni sweswe leswi na swi vona kuti policy na to ku sukela hi 1994 loko ita va hi ku mentsusheko ku fikela loko ita va hi veni vumbiwa bya he hi 1996 implementation <laughs> find that the uh, government is able to cater for other sectors such as youth and women and uh, there is also a mention of people with disabilities to an extent that uh, such a ministry has been uh, established the ministry of women youth and persons with disabilities it's always a challenge why people with disabilities are mentioned last that can only tell you that they are they are just uh, thought of after 
um, it's not a consideration. The slogan of people with disability is saying nothing about us without us. I can add, is for us. Dit is amper tijd voor ons om ten zien te zien, maar voor ons gaan, laat ons jullie met een gedicht wat geschreven is door die talentvolle Daphne Twala, een dichter en danser. Haar gedichte was voor haar manier om die discriminatie van die samenleving te vermijden. Till next week, remember to tune in at the same time, only here on SABC2. You belong. All roses can be red. I bloomed different, they called me weird. For a few years, they've made me feel like an outcast, but I've grown to live that hatred in the past. I've learned to love, but I've been scolded because it wasn't right. I've learned to hug, but they pinpointed that it wasn't tight enough, so I blamed myself for not being enough. Little did I know that all roses can be red. See, God colored mine for a screen by a purpose, but I couldn't embrace it since I was blinded by a bunch of red roses in one place. So I questioned him. All roses can be red. I am for a screen, let me reintroduce myself. So what if I love not like you? But yes, my love is authentic. What if I take longer in all I do? It doesn't mean that I can get it done, yes. I am still learning to embrace features of me which no one appreciates. I am mostly thorned, constantly insecure, yet I am strong. Strong enough to face each hatred sent my way. Strong enough to stand for my color. For I know I am one of the rarest kind and my color is godly defined. There are a lot of roses like me, colored different. In most cases, we fight to fit in when we were really made to stand out. All roses can be red. Embrace yourself, embrace your color. <laughs>